Today's Tiny Gami online class is a demonstration of how I string my miniature origami cranes using a metallic embroidery thread and a low temperature hot glue gun. So it's not a high temperature, it's a low temperature, especially if you're going to be using a metallic thread because the metallic threads are more fragile and they just don't hold up to that high heat as well. You can actually burn straight through the thread. I begin by taking the thread and putting just a little dab of glue stick, just like the glue paste kind of sticks. Uh, I'll include it in the, the blog post with this video that I dab the end of the thread with it and it keeps the thread from unraveling. And that way I can thread a very small needle. I use a quilting or between sharp is what they're called needle to string my tiny cranes. You can use a larger needle, obviously, if you're stringing larger cranes. But I tie the thread directly onto the needle to keep the needle from slipping off of the thread. And then what I do is I take a tiny crane and I'll part the wings just a little bit like this because I want to find the center of the back. And there will be a precise center because there's two diagonal lines that occur in the process of folding. And also in the process of folding, there's a hole that occurs on the underside of the crane, every crane. And I just bring the needle out through this existing hole. I will draw the crane to where I'd like it to be on the strand and I pinch the wings back shut again. So I hold my finger right on the thread where I want the glue to be and I'm going to lift this crane up above it. I just hold it in place with two of my other fingers. I take the glue gun, which is already warmed up I don't know if you can see, there's just a tiny dab of glue setting out the end of it there. And I'm just going to wipe that glue directly onto the thread. And then I'm going to pull this crane down. I go up and down to kind of work that glue into the hole. And place it where I want it to be. And now I can already let go of it. It's going to stay right there. It's not going to move up or down because that glue starts setting instantly. Next, I take the second crane, in this case, spread the wings just like the first one, look for the center of the back, just like I did the first time, guide the needle through that point, bring the needle out the bottom, Pull it through and now I'm going to glue this crane onto the line. This is where if I have a preference, if I want the cranes to face the same direction, I can actually set the direction just by placing the crane this way. I tend to like if they face different directions though, I think it makes it more interesting. And if I wanted the cranes to be a set distance apart from each other. I like to use this little tool. It's a seam allowance measurer. You could cut a piece of paper the exact distance you want between the cranes, or you could use a nifty little tool like this. I'm going to set the top of this seam allowance right here, right on the bottom side of the top crane, and I guide the lower crane wingtip right up to that section. So now what I'll do is repeat the process of I've locked it in place where I want it to be and I'm just using a little tension with my fingers there. I'm going to, well I want to make sure you can see this which is kind of hard to do. Okay, I want there to be just a little dab of glue coming off the end drop it there onto the line and I have just a few seconds to try to draw that glue inside that hole and then bring the crane down into position 
like this and let go. This process is repeated all the way till the end. And when I'm done hanging the cranes, I don't like to just cut the thread off. I actually like to drop back up into the crane body somehow and snip and trim it off so that you don't have a loose thread. If you end up with a tiny bit of glue showing, which is, I think, inevitable, it's bound to happen, you can see a little bit on the underside of this crane, I wipe the nozzle of the glue gun off, just like this real quickly with a paper towel, so there's no new glue there. I pull my thread taut so that there's tension there. The glue is on the back side. And all I do is touch this warm metal glue gun tip to it and it just, it melts it away. And so you don't end up with a clump of glue exposed on the underside. You can really do that as many times as, as you want to, as you think is necessary. Um, but usually it only takes one or two quick passes with the tip of the, the warm gun. I personally think one of the best reasons to hang the cranes is because then you can open the wings. And when you do that, it just makes the cranes look more delicate. You see the length of the neck and the tail. You see the shape of the wings better. Just like that. So I hope this tutorial is helpful to you. I'll go ahead and finish up here and show you what I meant about moving the uh, thread back up into the crane. The hole is here. So I'm just gonna go a little bit to the side and I'm gonna go like this, push the needle through and bring it out here in that crack between the body and the base of the neck. It'll come out this way. And then I can use a small, very sharp pair of scissors to just kind of reach in there and trim that end off. And then you end up with a very nice, clean presentation. I hope this is helpful to you. It's how I have hung thousands upon thousands of cranes and I've never had a problem with it. Um, and like I said, the ones, the first two mobiles I made in 1995 still look great today. If you have any questions about any of the technique here or any of the items, I'll show those in the blog post as well, then please feel free to leave me a comment or message me through the Tiny Gummy website. Thanks for dropping by for this online class and I hope you have a wonderful and very creative day.